Hey, welcome to Southern California KPFK, Brother Steve Coakley. Hey, good evening, brother. One of our great researchers that have exposed the boule, a phenomenon that most of us in the movement never knew about until you can. It brought light, took the uh, sheets off of these Negro clan members and explained to us what the boule is all about. So what we'd like you to do is tell us the history of the boule, who the boule are, their origins, and their relationship to the ruling class. Thank you, brother. Uh, one, I would uh, thank you for uh, hosting me and my friends here and appreciate you and all your company. Uh, everybody's excessively intense, and that is the demand of the day. Um, this secret society, this black, this particular black secret society that we'll talk about today is the first of the black Greek societies started in 1904, and that word that you said, boule, is actually an acronym. It's a Sigma Pi Phi, Sigma Pi Phi, 1904 in Philadelphia. And for most of our people, uh, we are not prepped to the responsibility of secret society in the American society. Mm -hmm. And this founding constitution, this illegal criminal enterprise was a Masonic affair. And uh, a masonry is a form of secret society. There are other well-known secret societies like Skull and Bones at Yale, of which this corrupt president and his father were members of. And it is that society that the black society modeled itself after. So when they wrote their first history book, The History of Sigma Pi Phi, by a very noted black author, University President Charles Wesley, who wrote the history book for the Elks, the Prince Hall Masons, uh, National Council of Negro Women, Alpha Phi Alpha, and Sigma Pi Phi. And as a result, in there, in page 28 of its first history book, it noted that it wanted to be like Skull and Bones at Yale. It was right here in Los Angeles at the Good Life on a Friday night. If you remember this time, the NAACP had a convention here, and LeGrand Cleague and Marla Gibbs were accused of making inflammatory statements. Working with Dr. Graham's book, The Mannequin Line Motif. Yes. That weekend, the Boule was meeting here, July mm. of 1990. They were having their twice every other year, uh, every other year convention, biannual. And it was a front page article in the LA Times by Karen Grigsby Gates. Mm hmm who uh, denoted that these elite black men were meeting in Los Angeles at this time. That was the first. I remember sending someone to the car to bring it in, and we read it from the stage of the boule on July 18th, the day the story appeared, front page L.A. Times. And I thought it was unusual that the L.A. Times knew of this society, and I didn't know of them. Now, for our audience to understand, I'm starting off trying to explain to black people the impact of international policy groups like the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, when the bankers began to take over the American cities in the 70s, New York 75, Cleveland 77, Chicago 79, and here in California they used Proposition 13 to suck up the surplus out the budget, and bankers began to take over from municipalities the governing of the cities. Mm -hmm. And as I was scratching, I could not figure out how was there such black complicity in this centralization of worldwide power, the New World Order. Uh, it's on the dollar bill, pyramid by white men who never built one, mm -hmm. never saw one. Mm -hmm. But they emulated this symbol. And now comes a series of societies, and now comes forth this black one in 1904. As we began to read deeper, it had another analogy in the story to Skull and Bones. It wasn't until we got the history book that the analogy that looked happenstantial in the story in the L.A. Times was actually deeper uh, in the actual history book where they drew attention to Skull and Bones, it denoted that W.E.B. Du Bois was a member, and it began to describe uh, people, uh, influential people in the present-day society, and historically, uh, our uh, university, historically black college presidents are primarily coming out of this uh, advisors to the king. And that word, that boule word, can be looked up in a encyclopedia. Well, now people don't use them, they use Internet. And that's a dangerous thing, a dangerous dependency. But boule, B-O-U-L-E, the Greek version. There's a French version that's a coming together, a conclave, the AKA called their convention, the boule. But the Greek word is what we're looking for, the advisors to the king. The lower house of the Greek parliament is called boule. Mm -hmm. And if you know the American congressional system, Senate, six years, more power, authority, only 100. 
two per state. Congress, 435, have to run every two years. Your lower house has less power and authority. So it appears as if in finding the boule that within it was a subordination to something else. And in its history book, it drew attention. Here's a logo. And this is a, uh, their logo is a Grecian sphinx. It's an animal. And this Grecian sphinx is similar to a griffin or a gargoyle. Kind of ironically, the Boulay had their convention in Los Angeles in 1941. And where else? Griffin Park. And this, this logo, this symbol, is a guardian animal. This would be similar to a Rockweiler or a dog or a German Shepherd. They tend to protect something higher than itself. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I went to Howard University, for instance, and a number of African so-called Greek societies, fraternities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well as in our community, is a number of secret, semi-secret organizations. How is the Boulay different than the numerous fraternities and groups in our community? What is the relationship to the ruling class? Father, son. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, nine, nine make up the axis of the black Greek dynasty. There are four male societies, four female societies, and the Boule make the ninth one. Mm -hmm. the, the, they're the first, 1904 series, the Alphas. Uh, uh, I, I'm not uh, versed in the exact order, but I, I have all of their history books, mm -hmm. and uh, each of them draw attention to things where they got their ritual from, the Deltas, uh, draw attention to Freemasonry, said our ritual came from Mary Church Terrell, mm -hmm. whose husband, Robert Terrell, was head of the Masonic Lodge in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Mary Church Terrell, Mary Church, is the daughter of the first black millionaire in America, Robert Church of Memphis, Tennessee. Huge mausoleum to him there. Those societies, uh, those four male, those four female, and the boule, tend to make up a, a aristocracy. We talked in the park about the 10 percent uh, not not in the sense of us in exclusivity but them in the terms of deputizing 10 percent of the population to assure that the 90 percent never catch on mm -hmm. and it's very important to know that if you look to Alpha Phi Alpha website there's alphas uh, kappas, Q's, and Phi Beta Sigma there's uh, Zeta Phi Beta, Delta Sigma Theta aka and Delta uh, I'm missing somebody uh, Sigma Gamma Rho uh, if you look to, say, the Alpha website, they brag about being 95% of all black lawyers. Mm -hmm. Now, if the Alphas are 95% of the black lawyers, what does that leave the Kappas, the Qs? Okay, now we're in the 90s. They claim to be 65% uh, uh, of the black accountants, uh, the lawyers, the doctors, dominating. And it may be that our professions are dominated by people in the Greek societies. At Howard, there was a student that I tried to help get a doctorate in engineering, very exclusive about giving them out. Mm -hmm. If you get one, you're set for life. Mm -hmm. Morgan State, Howard are very exclusive. Took big money from governments to make engineers, but the brothers, weren't, they weren't coming out. And when we got deeply involved, uh, we found how close-knit, how selective the professional process is. So he ended up at the patent office. He was a kappa. He said, we have 15 blacks, one female, 14 brothers, and all 14 of us are kappas. Only kappas going to get in here. Mm -hmm. and, and there are jobs all over where we think we're applying for something fair and open. But I would suggest that the ruling class recognized this was a very significant period Didon, when they decided that they would give a college degree mm -hmm. to a person of African ancestry in America who after Reconstruction should have been pretty pissed off. Mm -hmm. And so they were very weak about it to Africans in America, mm -hmm. only 2,000. So there was this thing they went through, a, a born man versus the made man. The born man, the king and the queens of Europe, uh, had to deputize people to colonize the lands, the Columbuses, mm -hmm and the uh, Cecil Rhodeses who went to Africa. They weren't the aristocracy, but they fought to be gladiators and colonists and explorers. The Lewis and Clark, who were Masons, uh, these men used the societies to advance the wishes of the ruling class, and they set up a system, a circle within a circle within another circle. Each circle protected the circle within it. Mm -hmm. So when you look to that Boulay logo, you see there's an urn, there's an animal, with the wing of, of the bird, the a tail of a lion, and, and it's got an urn, and it's got its paw over the urn, and it says in the history book number two by Hobart Jarrett that in the urn are the names of the people who are chosen to lead the state.
which suggests that part of the society function is not to make known who the people of power and authority are. And one of their most serious indictments to this society is what they were used to do against Marcus Garvey. Could you explain that, please? Marcus Garvey, who began to surge for Africa, the Negro was breaking free, doesn't have a good reason to get with the white American establishment. You're right, you're right. They don't have a good reason. They're not getting paid. <laughs> they're not, they're, they're just, but built the country, got set free, didn't get the 40 acres and the mule, right. got reconstructed when they began to move into the southern houses and the Senate. They got reconstructed and knocked back. So there's disarray in our community. And this is before the industrial cities of Chicago and others began to have steel and, and uh, cow, what do you call it, uh, the stock markets. Uh, not uh, These are cattle, not, mm -hmm. not uh, bonds, mm -hmm. uh, where people began to work. And the South fled to the North to work in those factories. And mm -hmm. Robert Abbott, mm -hmm. who was a boule man from Chicago, Chicago Defender, who it was a period when all the black editors were brought into Washington and told that they would have cracked down on Marcus Garvey and their newspapers were not to be used, the Pittsburgh Courier, Chicago Defender, the Afro-American in Baltimore and Washington. All of these are Boulay families, the advisors to the king, this, this group. So when Marcus Garvey came, uh, whites began to think that maybe assimilation is better. Maybe we can escalate. Let's not let these go. Maybe they don't seem too pissed off about all of this. Maybe they'll forgive these things we did to their ancestors, and maybe we can trick them, uh, have a little, want some more. Maybe. So as Garvey began to move, they began to see that a Harlem Renaissance could have been necessary, that they could then attract Africans in America in the literature and science and the arts and poetry. And when he said back to Africa, he's trying to get to Liberia. So R.R. R. Moulton, who was a big boule man from Tuskegee University, who replaced Booker T. Washington, R.R. R. Moulton became a spy for the U.S. government to coordinate the program against Marcus Garvey in America. We have declassified documents uh, that came out in uh, 1993. The uh, Memphis Commercial Appeal did the story about Martin King, Kwame Ture. A lot of things came out about spying. Well, in that, which did not make the public press, when we actually filed for the documents, there was R.R. R. Moten telling Von Demond at military intelligence, don't tell anyone what I'm going to tell you about what Marcus Garvey said last night in Harlem. Mm -hmm. You know, and the letters marked confidential. And, of course, eventually R.R. Uh, R. Moten who went to Liberia, was given $5 million to form a committee to keep Marcus Garvey out of Liberia. He never made it. He wanted to get there bad. Oh, yeah. They put $5 million, the $5 million in 1919, man, mm -hmm. this, is, this is $50 million, $100 million today. Inconceivable. And they rewarded R.R. R. Moten for trying to undermine Marcus Garvey. He got the first, check this deep, he got the first black veterans hospital in the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. And then what did they give him for reward? Syphilis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. You see the reward? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he got something. Blowback. But what they got was bad, yeah, you know, yeah, what they yeah. gave him, you know. So let me ask you, so in essence what you're saying is that the boule represents the buffer class, the petit bourgeois, the compador buffer class that manages Africa's workers, peasants, students, and middle class in many ways, mm -hmm. and are paid well for that. And they received their direct orders from a European capitalist class. Yes, if you were to look to today, where Boule members like Vernon Jordan, who is uh, managing director of Goldman Sachs, he took Bill Clinton to his first Bilderberger meeting in 1971. The black man took the white man from Arkansas to the big international meeting. Mm -hmm. Vernon Jordan, former head of the Urban League, who groomed Ron Brown, uh, who then went on to become secretary of, uh, uh, of uh, commerce, killed in a plane crash, mm -hmm. murdered, mm -hmm. um, because Boule are considered domestic. Martin King was Boule. Look at the relationship between Martin and Kwame over going against the war. You don't hear anybody in the african Center community primarily against the war. Mm -hmm. They're basically accepting it or looking for what they try to get when whites are passing out things like, you know, a grant here, this or that. They don't appear to be focused on that that money that's being wasted, those billions of dollars. You see, uh, African, the Afrocentric African, community at the Af Africans, support the war? They are not. No, 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 I'm just saying they are not uh, pushing against the war. Yeah. Say way Martin King, I what when, you're saying. when, yeah, when yeah, April yeah. 4th of 67, no, right. no, right. right. one year before he was yeah. killed to the day, 
when he came out of Riverside Church with Kwame in a shirt and tie in the front row, mm-hmm. waiting to hear, because he called and said, you got to mm-hmm. hear this. He comes out against the war. Boule men are told to be domestic, not international. Mm-hmm. Mickey Leland was Sigma Pi Phi. Mm-hmm. He tried to stop a starvation going on in Ethiopia, Somalia. He, his plane crashes into the mountain. Congressman from Texas, mm-hmm. he dies. Uh, Ron Brown, uh, yeah, Martin King, oh, yeah, no question, Martin King uh, became international, and that became his biggest sin. He was financed by some of the greatest foundations America ever had to offer. But mm-hmm. if they get beyond the defined limit, mm-hmm. then there's trouble. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In terms of young people today who are on college campuses, who want to join fraternities and sororities. What is your advice? It's interesting, the movie Stomp the Yard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was an interesting attempt to try to reconstruct the options because they are catching hell in the streets. There is a rise of comedic-centered, African-centered societies that are repudiations of Greeks. And this is on the rise on many of the campuses around the country. Uh, and many of those fraternities and sororities like the American military were finding reduced numbers, questions of hazing and brutality. And see, that's an important thing about a secret society is the initiation or the ritual, which is an act of submission. Mm -hmm. I would never want anyone to underestimate when someone goes on that line and they beat them or they make them do things or unusual things or ridicule them, that that act is an act of submission, and that's mm-hmm. very essential to keeping a secret society in order. How do you command that subordination? Mm-hmm. And uh, that, as, as, so for today, when they're on the campuses, they see the Boule. If you look to the Boule Journal, you can look up uh, Sigma Pi Phi dot net. You can hit up my website, stevecopley.com, and then you can link into their website. Uh, you look at their Boule Journal, you see what they play up there, the head of everything, they're announcing every key position they have, they're the advisor to every person, every corporation, uh, they're the black head of American Express, you know, we can just walk on down the line of those that roles were theirs and only theirs, no one got past. You know, I noticed the Harold Washington, our black mayors were uniquely Boule, Andy Young when he was Atlanta, Dinkins when he was New York, Bradley when he was Los Angeles. But none of those men were able to groom their man. Mm -hmm. So Bradley was mayor 20 years but didn't have Bradley, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, Dinkins couldn't turn it over to anybody. Them white folk walked and beat on his door to run him out. Uh, 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 Different cities. uh, Detroit, Coleman Young was not a Boulay member. Mm -hmm. Harold Washington was not a Boulay member. Mm -hmm. And the relationship between the uh, white financial firms and Harold Washington was uniquely different than it was with men who were more trusted. Okay, we're going to take a brief station idea. We'll come back to Brother Steve Coakley, uh, excellent researcher in the question of the boule. Back to uh, KPFK with Brother Steve Coakley talking about the boule and the relationship to the struggling African masses, especially the United States of America. Brother Steve. Yeah, it just made me think about something we had talked about. You know, um, as a young brother in Chicago, really uh, wanting to get involved in the movement, uh, when I came back from college, there there were various options. I was uh, in Chicago, and um, you know, the black politics uh, at 75 was still dominated by Mayor Daley, uh, Ralph Metcalf, who was the first person to break away, whose assistant was Harold Washington, who eventually became the mayor. That first congressional district, which Bobby Rush, former Black Panther, is mm-hmm. the congressman in now. Um, that that district, uh, we had Haki Mahabuti there, uh, Bobby Wright was on the west side, um, um, the NAACP, the Urban League. Uh, Elijah Muhammad. Uh, yes, yeah, I was going to say, the minister actually came to Chicago just a couple of years later when, the, when Elijah Muhammad died and uh, he was brought in from New York and then stripped by Wallace D. And he stayed in Chicago. Uh, uh, with that period of coming back, there was not a lot of things to get involved in. As I'm scratching, I, I found a book, a none dare call it conspiracy. Mm-hmm. So white, right wing kind of guy I've book. Read it. I've read and it. it says sometimes some things about us are communists or something. Uh, but I looked through that and I saw relationships with General Electric and Exxon Mobil and, and I looked at all and these relationships I started to research. It wasn't until I found them in Chicago that Chicago accepted what I was trying to say. We used to have one radio show came on WJPC, Johnson Publishing, mm-hmm. who is Boulay, Ebony Jet, etc. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Vernon Jarrett was the host of the show, who I didn't know was head of the Boulay at that time, Chicago Tribune, columnist, uh, started Axel for the NAACP. 
And one day I called in and I was trying to explain some of this stuff, and he cut me off. He said, we're not going to have any of that. I didn't know he was Boule. Uh, when I ended up becoming special assistant to the mayor, the other special assistant was Erwin France, who was head of model cities under Mayor Daly. He was an alpha like the mayor, they buddies, all of this and that. But I was a threat to him, but I didn't know at that time he was head of the Boule. It wasn't until later. And then that's when I went to my friends, my african Center friends in Chicago, and said, hey, man, I'm researching these white folks, and I think I found the black folks connected to the white folks. And then I started finding black folks' names, african Center black folks' names, uh, Jake Carruthers, you know. And now Jake Carruthers is my hero in Chicago. He's, he's in a group with Bobby and Conrad and Bob Starr, a lot of people, I, Anderson Thompson, people I love. I, he, he said, man, we got to talk. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, um, I started looking up other names. I saw Asa Hilliard's name. And, I, and so I felt that as I began to get deeper into this relationship, I began to notice that my African Center friends were less happy about me getting to the bottom of this. And they wanted to focus me on, I remember they taking me in a room. I used to work for Bobby Wright. I remember them taking me in the research room. They had put this map of the United States. And they had all these little pin boards on Montana, Utah, Wyoming. I said, now, we want you to focus on these guys. I said, well, what bank do they run? And I was trying to say that the first national bank of Chicago was Chase Manhattan because mm -hmm. the guy left Chase came to Chicago, took it over. Well, time came. First National Bank of Chicago merged with Bank One of Ohio. They merged with the National Bank of Detroit. That's the region. They all merged with Chase who had just merged with J.P. Morgan, mm -hmm. and now Rockefeller got the banks from New York all the way to Chicago, nonstop, every one of them locked down. But the Chicago was resistant to accepting this focus. See, why aren't our people focused on ExxonMobil? Why are no protests against high-ass mm -hmm. oil prices, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I make my children know who's on the boards of all these corporations, the private equity firms that own all of the stock, Vanguard, Wellington, uh, Global, Barclay Global. Uh, these companies are obscure to our community. Mm -hmm. We're not knowing. We're not focusing on the white supremacy that's coming at us. The Klan is not a threat to our African community. They're not coming in the neighborhood, but Chase and and, and Goldman Sachs and Lazard Ferrez and uh, Standard & Poor's and Moody's, uh, obscure bond rating companies that can control cities that our people don't don't mess with, you know. Mm -hmm. I showed in Chicago and uh, Cincinnati, which had a, one of the best boycotts Boycott, of any right, city. Right. It is, I mean, it was, and it still went on just last weekend. They tried to come back with a big festival. Mary J. Blige pulled out. Some more people pulled out. Kind of made it lose money. Mm -hmm. And uh, But there in Cincinnati, we targeted, we targeted uh, uh, three people. The Taft family, which runs the state, Skull and Bones. Mm -hmm. Taft family still today. The governor was just left as governor. Uh, we uh, targeted Procter & Gamble, and we targeted Carl Linder who owned Chiquita Bananas. Mm -hmm. And when we got through harassing Chiquita Bananas, some of our friends at the radio station there had stock, $119 a share. When we finished with him, it went to $5.40 a share, and he sold Chiquita. Now, what I'm trying to say is there's a vulnerability in America that has not been exercised by our community because our secret societies have been pledged never to tell us those vulnerabilities. They work for them. They patch them. They protect them. They act like they don't exist, but they serve them, mm -hmm. and they never utter against them, even never whisper to us. Mm -hmm. If you saw on that boule tape when we were there messing at the convention, mm -hmm. I told my buddies, we're not here to recruit them. We don't want them to be better brothers. We want to warn them that if they're the guard dog on white supremacy, when we jump the fence, what you going to do? You're going to bite, you're going to fight, or you're going to run out and let us get to who we after. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But how do we get to who we after when we got all this wing and wang out here, all this distraction, mm -hmm. all this misfocusing, and then is there complicity in our community? When some people killed Martin King, when some people killed Malcolm X, did that neutralize our present leadership? Mm -hmm who are byproducts of assassination? Mm -hmm. Did this put us in a bind? Do we have a lot of old paper out there that white folks work when they want to that keep us in a bind that we don't seem to talk back? Mm -hmm. How can they make $10 billion in 90 days mm -hmm. in an oil company that was broken up when a white woman attacked them in 1911, Tarbell? They broke them companies up, them standard oils, and then they brought them all back together. Exxon got with Mobile, Chevron got back with Texaco, and all the things Rockefeller broke up got put back together. Let me ask you a question. So would you say, because it seems to me the common denominator of all the corporations in the system you're talking about is capitalism slash imperialism. So that in fact, organizations that are anti-capitalist as a, as a theoretical formulation and specifically target 
these multinational corporations, these oligarchies. That is the path of liberation for African people and destruction of this economic and political system. And maybe that's why also in this historical period we exist today, you find that very few so-called African nationalist or progressive organizations are anti-capitalist. In fact, what they're saying is we want to be part of the system as opposed to attack capitalism, but we want black capitalists instead of European capitalists. And you know it's the one thing we have to be careful for as time has progressed. The, if you were to go to Toybean Hall in London when they created social work, Mm -hmm. when the rich felt it was necessary to infiltrate the poor so that they aspired through the tentacles of the rich that had mm -hmm. been spread out amongst them, that if you fought capitalism all day and you ended up not fighting the social service network, you would find there's another aspect that might not even pledge to be capitalist at all, might pledge to be helping the people. But most of the so social service networks are either financed by nonprofits, yes. churches, foundations, yes. the state, yes. cultural yes. affairs departments yes. of different, I mean, yes. different cities, some I mean, we can go down a whole list right. of funding sources. Right. So in the final analysis, if we go after the capitalist system as a theoretical formulation, but pinpoint, as you say, with laser hair, focus the specific corporations as a category to be assessed, especially in terms of impact upon African people, like you say, the poor is a standard, and these multiple bond associations uh -huh. that finance or definance infrastructure in our communities, and as capital is now going to Iraq and Afghanistan to build their economic and social structure at the expense of ours. There is a web. There is a web. There are mm -hmm. sports. There are the media. Mm -hmm. There are education. Mm -hmm. There are social service. Mm -hmm. There are astronauts. Churches. They're the church. <laughs> right. they, they are all of that. Right. They You're are right. the secret societies, too. Yeah, and they right. all work in a loose-knit fashion, and they keep disagreements within a manageable limit. Let me just say a couple things real quick. We've got about 60 seconds. Uh, and I want this you to Saturday, your website. This Saturday, this Saturday at the FIBA Center, I'm going to give a free lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, this Saturday, the uh, Los Angeles South Central Study Group, been meeting there for seven years, 10 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. this Saturday at the FIBA Center on 57th and Crenshaw. September 11th, we're going to Washington, D.C. The adverse impact of 9-11 on the African Center community must be articulated. We are faceless in the scheme of terrorism and uh, mispro uh, misappropriated finances of Iraq, etc. Mm -hmm. This Saturday, 10 o'clock, stevecoakley.com. You can reach me at area code 202-256-2097. Area code 202-256-2097. Don't send me no email on that website. I won't read it. Call me.